I'll never tire of saying that The Witcher 3 is fantastic. However, in the modern age, it's all too easy to play a great game and simply get lost in it without acknowledging the painstaking hours and effort that went into creating it. In a game as vast and rich as The Witcher 3, special care must be put into crafting the setting in order to make the world believable and authentic, and CD Projekt Red knocked this one out of the park. In part one of this video series, I tackled the atmospheric and brutally poetic region of Velen. In this video, I'll be discussing an area that's almost a polar opposite of Velen, in terms of aesthetic characteristics. As you travel from the boggy marshes of Velen to the grasslands of Novograd's outskirts, and eventually into Novograd proper, a stark contrast in topographical features can be immediately observed. Novigrad is so far removed from Velen in terms of shallow things such as the surface level atmosphere, the architecture, the wealth, the thriving merchants, and the bards that perform in front of brothels. At times, Novigrad can feel like a completely different video game to Velen. It can be fun and lighthearted. Yet at the same time, if you dig deep enough into Novigrad's soulless underbelly, it's quite easy to find some core elements that fit perfectly into the cynical universe of The Witcher and make it very similar to Velen. Novigrad is economically top-heavy, corrupt, classist, and the people are so rigidly clinging to ideals fed to them by those in power that they think will benefit them. Not all of Novigrad's downfalls are subtle, either. Geralt's first time in Novigrad results in him witnessing a monstrous burning of non-humans at the stake. Themes of monstrous humanity and survival instinct similar to Velen, are abundant in this famous metropolis. Novigrad is so dense, and I'm here to tell you just how much there is to this city. Today I'll be touching on both the things that make Novigrad so different from Velen, and the things that are startlingly similar, along with just how its ideas add so much to the story and themes of this wonderful game and universe. There is a welcome and distinct shift in the style of storytelling as we move from Velen to Novigrad. In Velen, everything was depressing and somber, with no real spice or wit in many of the characters we meet. Everyone is weighted down under a filter of misery. As I've stated in part one of this video series, this is completely realistic and effective. Why should Velen be anything other than miserable when you take in the context of its situation? However, change was needed. If an entire game the size of The Witcher 3 had Velen's bleak atmosphere and somber darkness the entire way through, it would become monotonous. After spending many hours in that swamp, a change in narrative style was needed, and we got it. Now, everything is far from rosy in Novigrad, and we'll discuss exactly why this is in a little bit, but the tone is lightened up from the heaviness of Velen due to one reason, the characters. In Novigrad, we are reintroduced to some of the most colorful and best written characters this series has to offer. Dandelion, Zoltan, Triss, Roche, Dijkstra, Radovid. These characters are all so distinct and because of this, the story becomes much more dynamic. Velen is brilliant, but it's consistently foreboding and bleak in its tone, while Novigrad is much more varied. Through Radovid, we see some pure political insanity. Through Roach, we see a fierce determination. Dijkstra is cynical, intelligent, and cutting in a brilliant way, and Triss's willingness to go through torture to help Geralt, plus her ambitions to save the mages of Novigrad, was admirable. And after the misery of the game's opening act, I found it so much fun to simply talk with Zoltan, visit all the scorned women that Dandelion had left in his wake, and see Geralt try his hand at acting. Masquerade balls, casinos, cross-dressing elves. There's just a bunch of fun to be had in the city. Novigrad is also home to some divine story beats as well. Priscilla's beautiful performance at the Kingfisher is one of my favorite moments from the game. Now, Novigrad's quests also contain some terribly dark situations and reflections of reality, as we'd expect from this series. However, there is a good amount of color and humor in some of the story segments of Novigrad, and I'm sure that this was done completely intentionally for tonal balance. And it totally works. Something unique about Novigrad is that it has retained its neutrality in spite of the ongoing war. 
However, the city is an extremely valuable resource. It has coin, ships, weapons, and arguably the most important thing, the ability to shape public perception through societal influence. The nation in charge of Novograd would find it quite simple to plant negative ideas about the opposing army in the citizens' heads through manipulation. Due to this, Novograd is extremely appetizing to both Nilfgaard and Redania, though it is risky for either to go completely all out and take it. As it stands in the beginning of the game, Radovid and Redania have a decent foothold in Novograd for a few simple reasons. Firstly, Novograd simply sits behind Redania lines and in Redanian territory, close to the Redanian controlled Oxenfurt, so Nilfgaard can't very well establish anything solid within it, aside for a choice few who are considered Nilfgaardian royalty and are important enough to bypass the primarily Redanian north. Secondly, Radovid's hate and persecution of mages and magic falls in line with the cult of the Eternal Fire's hatred for non-humans, so he has established some influence in the city. Additionally, Radovid has employed Horson Jr. to attempt to create chaos in Novigrad, making it right for him to swoop in. At the same time, however, Nilfgaard is slowly advancing north towards Novigrad. All of this creates an uneasy and tense atmosphere throughout many parts of the city, while taking the atmosphere of Novograd at face value may make it seem like this place is thriving, vibrant, and fun, the true atmosphere is much different than that. The war is on everyone's mind. It's so tense and tactical, with so much at stake. Mainly due to the tense political situation of the city and the wealth of the resources it contains, the situation of Novograd is far from peaceful. Despite all of the quirks that the story segments of this region contain, Novigrad is deceivingly dark and depressing, nearly as much so as Velen. Beneath the bright city streets, the dancing crowds, the spoony bards and the wealthy townsmen, Novigrad has a foreboding underbelly full of narrow-minded ideals and corruption. The four underworld bosses, the fish tech dealers, and Radovid himself's foothold in the city just affect the economic dynamic of Novograd so much, and not in a neutrally positive way. Because of this, you can almost feel the corruption as you travel through the city. Nepotism, elitism, and segregation are everywhere, and Novograd has such a huge class difference between the rich and nearly everyone else that it's quite shocking. There is really no middle class in Novograd, with the exception of merchants or those people that run small businesses like inns or armories. It's a classic situation in Novograd where the rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poorer, mixed in with some brutal condemnation towards non-humans fueled by the Church of the Eternal Fire. Except for extremely rare cases for non-humans such as Vimy Vivaldi, the lower class and non-humans can reside in Novograd Yet the persecution and dismissing of many of these individuals almost makes living here not worth it. As Geralt himself says, in times of strife, humans need something to blame, and the Order of the Eternal Fire gives plenty of outlets for aggression and blame, though the vast majority of them are unjustified. All of this corruption and pure injustice crafts an atmosphere and tone in Novograd that's so different than what someone would initially expect given the city's outside reputation and surface-level aesthetics. Novograd is just a dirty city, with so much contrast between classes. The sheer amount of persecution that non-humans in Novograd face also brings some thought-provoking moral questions to the foreground. I distinctly remember one of these situations in the game that changed my whole perspective on the lower class. An elven woman was being harassed by a couple of obnoxious men on the outskirts of one of the slum-like areas in Novigrad. Me, being the oblivious knight in shining armor that I am, jumped in and told the men to bugger off, and they did. Pleased with myself, I was surprised and annoyed to see that the elven woman was not grateful, but insulted that I had helped her. She said that Geralt may have gotten the men to leave for today, but they'd be back tomorrow and twice as vulgar. She also said that I didn't care about her, I just wanted to do a good deed to feel good about myself and then I'd be on my way. I was initially upset about this reaction, but after a while I thought, can I really blame her? 
What was most eye-opening about this encounter was that there was some truth to her words. I then realized that from my outside perspective, I was narrow-minded and naive to think that I knew how to make the persecuted feel better. I could not hope to understand how the lowest of the lower class felt in this city. In video games, we're used to being in control of everything, being able to please everyone. Yet The Witcher 3 takes a much more subtle and nuanced approach to the attitudes of the downtrodden. And this is entirely realistic, yet quite sad at the same time. But the game is all the more impressive for moral complexity like this. On the surface, the tall buildings of Novigrad seem quite welcoming, especially to the poor citizens of Velen. There seems to be an opportunity for business, the non-humans are allowed to live there, and it's regarded by word of mouth as one of the shining cities of the land. Yet, the tragic paradox about the societal situation in The Witcher 3 is that there are nearly as many people in Novigrad wishing that they could get out as there are people in Velen wishing that they could get in. I do think that the citizens of Velen have it harder, but the lower class of Novigrad suffer in a more psychological and personal manner. In summary, for the vast majority of individuals in this setting, neither Novigrad or Velen makes for a decent or even passable place to live. There is just pure suffering everywhere thanks to the state of the world. This aspect of The Witcher 3 makes quite a societal statement and craftedly reflects certain real-world issues that other works of fiction are unwilling to tackle, too blunt, or too soft about. The Temple Guard and the Church of the Eternal Fire are the power in Novigrad, and to live properly in this city one must conform to their twisted ideals. Simple but sensitive themes about discrimination in relation to sucking up to the highest bidder are different to Velen's themes based on a more straightforward sort of suffering but they're just as depressing and damning on humanity. Novigrad is as much of a societal and sociological study as it is a setting in a video game. The class contrasts, the elitism, and nepotism established in this land the fear that grips the people leading to heavy-handed corruption? This city fits the sardonic nature of the Witcher universe like a glove. Novigrad is starkly different from Velen in terms of tone and character moments in the story segments, but the two regions are alike with regards to certain themes and takes on humanity. At their core, both Velen and Novigrad are brilliant at displaying the lows that humanity stoops to in order to get ahead in times of suffering. Although it must be said that Novigrad can be a lot of fun at times due to the simple joys of interacting with some amazing and more upbeat characters. Overall, it's a very dynamic and diverse city, and although there's been some valid criticism about how sparse Novigrad can be for how huge and economically relevant it is, its strengths far outweighs the nitpicks that some would call flaws. Novigrad is a wonderful setting that you learn about more each time Geralt walks down those cobbled streets.